here's my master's computer science degree from Stanford in this many minutes. I spent five years at Stanford getting a bachelor's and master's degree in computer science. So I started working on my master's degree concurrently while I was still finishing up my undergrad in something called the Cochin program. If you want to learn more about my undergrad degree, I made a separate video about that, which I'll leave in the description. Doing the 4 plus 1 program was fairly common at Stanford because it was relatively easy to get into the master's program if you had already done a Stanford undergrad degree. And because you went to Stanford undergrad, you would have awareness or connections with faculty, which made it relatively easy for you to get a teaching assistant job or a research assistant job, which effectively paid for your entire degree. It paid for tuition and room and board. One question I get a lot is whether it's worthwhile to do a master's degree in computer science if your eventual goal is just to be a software engineer. I think there are a couple of situations where it does make sense. Number one is if you don't have a brand name, company, or school on your resume, then I think there is actually a lot of value in having some level of brand or prestige on your on your track record because that'll open up opportunities for you. Second, for immigration. I know a lot of people come to the U.S. for a master's degree from a different country, and that, that's a really viable path if you want to end up settling in a different country. And third, if you want to pivot into a different field of software engineering, or if you just want to take a break from work and you just want a graceful way of exiting your company, again, a, a master's degree in computer science could be one way to do that. None of these reasons really applied to me because I was already a U.S. citizen and I already had the Stanford name brand for undergrad. And financially, it doesn't really make sense to do a master's um, because it usually is quite expensive. And even if your degree is paid off completely like mine was because I was doing research, it still doesn't make that much sense because the opportunity cost is that you're giving up one or maybe two years of working as a software engineer in industry, which is you're going to be paid really well. And when you get your master's degree, you're not actually going to be paid that much more compared to if you had just gotten an undergrad degree in computer science. So why did I do a master's? For me, it was mostly a regret that I had never really interacted with faculty at Stanford as an undergrad, and I wanted to have that opportunity. So my fifth year at Stanford, I had the opportunity to finally do research with the professor, and I was able to take some classes that I hadn't had time to take as an undergrad. Financially, it wasn't worth it, but it was a lot of fun. I don't really have any regrets about spending that extra year in school. To get the degree, I needed to take 45 units of coursework, which translated roughly to 15 classes, and I officially graduated with a master's degree in computer science with a concentration in artificial intelligence, which is funny because I don't use AI at all in my job right now. Starting with the fall of 2012, this is the fourth year of my undergrad, but this is when I start taking classes for my graduate degree. So the first class I took was Applied Matrix Theory, which is basically a more advanced version of linear algebra, and I thought it was really interesting because doing things with matrices, which is a lot of linear algebra, um, doing operations on matrices is fundamental to a lot of computer science. Next, I took programming languages, which was my first real exposure to functional programming through Haskell, which is a very different way of thinking compared to how most software engineers will write code. Finally, I took a one unit entrepreneur thought leadership seminar course, uh, which is classic Stanford. Stanford is in the middle of Silicon Valley. So you have all these big deal entrepreneurs and venture capitalists who come to campus and talk about their experience building up companies. And that really is one of the best parts of campus to be able to actually interact and see all these people. In winter, I took two classes for the master's degree. First was natural language understanding, which is about how do computers derive meaning or context from a written text. And the final project here was about named entity recognition. So given a sentence, how do you pull out the names or places in that text? I also took Mining Massive Datasets, which is a course about data mining and machine learning algorithms on large amounts of data. And this class was really important because in my fifth year at Stanford, which is the following year, I ended up doing research with the professor who taught this class about big data recommendation systems. In spring quarter, I took a one unit seminar about law for computer scientists which was taught by a top attorney in a Silicon Valley law firm. And we talked about things like patent law and IP protection. Fall of 2013 was the start of my fifth and final year at Stanford. And I took two classes this quarter. First was 221, which is artificial intelligence, the core AI class, where we basically surveyed a bunch of different artificial intelligence ideas, such as machine learning, game playing, and constraint satisfaction. My final project was to automatically answer SAT vocabulary questions given the context of the sentence and the different multiple choice questions that we had. 
I also took a class about social and information network analysis, which again was taught by the same professor who I was now actively doing research with. In winter quarter, I took the Intro to Human Computer Interaction, or HCI course, which I really loved because it was really focused on building, as opposed to all my AI classes, which were much more theoretical and math focused. So in this class, we did things like user research, creating mockups, and actually building a real app. I took the advanced algorithms course, which was called Optimization and Algorithmic Paradigms, where we talked about things like randomized algorithms and graphs. And all the problem sets in this course were partner-based, which was really great because my partner was very talented at computer science theory, and I learned a lot from him. Next, I took public speaking, which was great because it forced me to be uncomfortable and go up on stage every two weeks and deliver a speech to the whole class. Finally, I took a one-unit seminar about database and information management, where experts from different companies would come in and talk about how the industry handles huge amounts of data. And my thinking at the time was that either I would become an expert in data mining, this field, or I would be really go deep into NLP or natural language processing. And this seminar was a really good way to figure out which one of these I really cared about more. Ironically, I actually ended up not doing either of those. And most of my career has been spent building up mobile apps and APIs and just doing product development. Finally, my last quarter at Stanford in spring 2014, I took three courses. First, spoken language processing, which focused on dialogue and conversational systems. Second, uh, I did a project in mining massive data sets, which was a group project where we looked at Amazon review data and looked at how do users evolve their reviews over time. And third, I did my first and only class in the med school, which was about mindfulness meditation. So every week, twice a week, I would go into the med school and actually just meditate for an hour and a half, which was actually really great. Whether or not you're a student, if you want quick insights to navigate your engineering career, I'll leave a link for my mailing list in the description. I hope this is a helpful perspective of a master's degree at a top computer science program in the country. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.